Hey guys, Doug B here. This week I had planned on going over one of the requests that you guys had sent in. Then Fractal did another firmware update. Firmware 20.00 public beta version 4 came out. And when firmware comes out, it takes precedence. So let's take a look at those release notes. New block mixer algorithm results in faster slash quieter scene and channel changes. This new algorithm allows placing amp blocks in series without the concomitant sound bursts that would normally occur when switching scenes. Concomitant. Well, had to visit the dictionary for that one. Naturally accompanying or associated. She loved travel with all its concomitant worries. And as a noun, it's a phenomenon that naturally accompanies or follows something. Some of us look on pain and illness as concomitants of the stress of living. Well, there it is, guys. Concomitant. Your new word of the day. I built a quick preset to see if we can place amp blocks one after another and then switch between them with no noise. I used quick build from within Axetic to throw this together. You know, in one, out one, amp block one, amp block two right after it, and the cab block. Very simple. Now, if we take a look at amp block one, channel A is the CA3 plus clean. Channel B is the 59 bass guy bright. Channel C is the AC20 EF86 treble. And channel D is the camera and CCV2A. If we go to amp block two, channel A, 5153 100 watt blue. Channel B, Citrus Terrier. Channel C, Friedman BE V2. And channel D, Thordendahl Vintage. Cab block uses factory two number 1022, a 4x12C G12M, Greenback 57 Bal CEL. Not sure what that means, but it's a 4x12 G12M Greenback cabinet mic'd with a Sure 57. Scene 1 will use Amp 1 Channel A. Scene 2 will use Amp 2 Channel A. The rest of the scenes will follow in the same fashion, alternating between Amp 1 block and the Amp 2 block. Each scene is named after the amp type being used. So you can see CA3+. 5153, 59 Bass Guy, Citrus Terrier, AC20, Friedman, Cameron, and Thordendahl. Okay, let's test for concomitant noise by switching from scene to scene in succession. Hey, it works! No concomitant noise at all when switching between the amp blocks rapidly. This is big because prior to this release, if you wanted to use two amp blocks in a preset, they had to be run in parallel with separate paths, which could result in some complicated presets. Now you can run them in series, one after another. Very cool. New speaker drive algorithm in amp block. This new algorithm more accurately models the frequency-dependent distortion of guitar loudspeakers. The default value upon resetting the block is 2.0, which gives roughly 1 dB of compression. Setting the value to 0.0, .0 defeats the speaker drive modeling. Higher values give a smoother and more focused sound, rounding off the sharp edges and yielding greater compression. Now, when I posted an announcement about this firmware earlier this week, I said that you'd have to reset the amp block. I've since checked with Fractal and that is not the case. Now you can reset it if you want to, but it's not necessary. Right now, all existing presets will have speaker drive set to zero. As mentioned earlier, setting it to zero defeats the speaker drive modeling. You can simply set the value to two, which is now the default when creating a new preset. So I built another quick preset to see what happens when we start off with speaker drive at zero, then two, then four, and so on up to 10. And you know, I used quick build again. Now every amp channel in both amp blocks is using the CA3 plus clean. The only difference is the speaker drive value, which goes from zero up to 10 while going through the six scenes in succession. Amp block one has speaker drive values of zero, two, four, and six. Amp block two has speaker drive values of eight and 10. The cab block is using factory two number 781, four by 12 pre-rolla greenback 57. 
Now let's step through the six scenes to see what happens. Speaker drive at zero. Speaker drive. Speaker drive at four. Speaker drive at six. Speaker drive at eight. And speaker drive at 10. And that last one was going back to zero. Added new dynamic distortion block. This effect distorts the input signal dynamically, applying more distortion to different frequency ranges depending upon the shape of the filter. When the signal level is low, the output will be the same as the input. As the signal level increases, more distortion will occur in those bands boosted by the filter shape. This is a powerful tool for final shaping slash mastering of your tone. The block contains a handful of presets which demonstrate the basic technique. I built one more quick preset to see what happens when we add dynamic distortion. And of course I used quick build again. The amp block is using the CA3 plus clean type. The all new dynamic distortion block has seven different types available. Dynamic depth boost, dynamic depth cut, dynamic mid boost, dynamic mid cut, dynamic presence boost, dynamic presence cut, and flat. I made the first scene with the dynamic distortion turned off. And then each of the following scenes uses one of the dynamic distortion types, as you can see in the scene names here. In order for this to work, I had to use both dynamic distortion blocks. Four types in the first block, and three in the second. Now let's step through the eight scenes to see what happens. This is dynamic distortion off. Dynamic depth boost. Dynamic depth cut. Dynamic mid boost. Dynamic mid cut. Dynamic presence boost. Dynamic presence cut. And the last one is flat. And one more time with it turned off. Fixed amp block scene ignore not being recalled correctly in some cases. This was another case of one of the forum members sending in a preset that showed that there was problems with scene ignore in the amp block. When scene ignore was turned on, if he turned off his AxeFX3 and then turned it back on, Scene Ignore was turned off. Fractal looked at it and made the necessary fix. I didn't try to recreate this one since it only happened in certain cases. But like I said last week, Fractal listens to their customers. So there you have it guys, my walkthrough of firmware 20.00 public beta number four. Now it's a lot of fun, there's no doubt about that, but I would really hold off on updating it until the regular release comes out. There's been some folks that have been reporting some bugs, and I know Fractal's going to be taking care of that stuff, so unless you just want to check out something new, hold off for now. And I will let you know when, you know, the regular factory release comes out. Okay, moving on. As I've been telling you guys, I am looking for your ideas and thoughts on how to make this channel better, and what kind of videos you'd like to see me do. 
And what I'm doing is I am running a contest and it's uh, for a free guitar. What I want you to do is send in your comments. Every comment that you send in, I will write your name down on a piece of paper, fold it in half and put it in a bowl. On June 11th, which is the one year anniversary of this channel, I will have my wife pull a piece of paper out of the bowl and whoever's name gets called out wins this guitar, this strap, and a Tweed hard shell case. This is a Slick Guitars SL59 with a P90 in it. Now, unfortunately, I do have to limit this to the continental United States, you know, because shipping outside of the lower 48 is just way, 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 way too much. If <laughs> shipping in the lower 48 is, is going to be expensive enough. But if your name is chosen and you live in the lower 48, I will send you that guitar, strap, and case absolutely free of charge. So go ahead, get sending in on those ideas and thoughts, guys. Now, next Wednesday, we will be looking at another preset of the week. You don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, see you next week.